Classical music contains a lot of great composers, so why do they all seem to be dudes? Well, I'm the Classical Nerd, and today we're talking about classical music's gender gap. One of the earliest Western composers we know of is a nun named Hildegard of Bingen, long considered a saint before her official canonization by the Roman Catholic Church. Her musical contributions consist of attractive melodic settings of her mystical poetry, although she was a polymath who did everything from found natural science in her area of Germany to creating her own language. But after her, it's hard to name any other known female composer until the 19th century. So why is this? Well, first off, the church controlled a great many aspects of life, and controlling women was no exception. The Roman Catholic Church didn't allow women to even sing in their choirs. The soprano and alto lines had to be taken by boys, or men who had been castrated. <sighs> Culturally, women were seen as subservient to men, and music was no exception. The few exceptions out there really grew up under some extraordinary circumstances which allowed them to develop as musicians. And even though they suffered under the misogynistic attitudes of the era, they were in positions where it didn't affect them nearly as much. Examples include Barbara Strozzi, who grew up in a very liberal Venice and whose father helped launch her musical career, as well as Elizabeth Claude Jacquet de Laguerre, who was a favorite of Louis XIV in his court. As time went on, although still restricted in social status, female musicians became a more common sight. Many were introduced as child prodigies, such as Mozart's sister Nannerl. These prodigies often found an interest in composition stemming from improvisation, but they were discouraged in this practice. For some reason, composition was seen as an essentially masculine activity. Such a view was unfortunately very widespread, although there were a few exceptions. Felix Mendelssohn's sister Fanny was an accomplished musician herself, and she wrote a great many pieces, many of which were published under Felix's name. And oftentimes, Fanny's contributions to Felix's opus would be singled out as the best pieces of the set. The glass ceiling of performance was well and truly busted when it came to Clara Schumann. She was a remarkable pianist, who maintained a career arc from child prodigy to continent touring mega virtuoso. She also had a small but significant compositional output, although it was suppressed not just because of the patriarchal musical establishment, but also because she had so much else to do on her hands. This lack of confidence reflected in her and her husband's joint marriage diary, and she pretty much gave up composition after her husband died. While it's likely that Robert's encouragement was one of the few things keeping her going, she also had to support her family through concertizing after his death, so there was absolutely no way she had time to compose anyway. Her compositional bona fides are nothing to shake a stick at. At one point, Felix Mendelssohn laughed in the face of an acquaintance who was shocked to discover that Clara had written a complicated piece of chamber music. Female composers still tend to be the exception rather than the rule. As outsiders in a long male-dominated field, only recently has there been a move towards parity. Those that have, have done so despite continuing social pressures. The French composer Germaine Taillefer, a famous part of Les Six, married twice, and both of her husbands just tried to discourage her from composing, but she didn't care. Nadia Boulanger was one of the most revered musical pedagogues of the 20th century, whose students form a veritable who's who of classical music. Her sister Lily left behind many significant works before her unfortunately early death. Cécile Chaminade composed many pieces and made a career out of performing them and Canadian composer Sophie Carmen Eckhart Gramate wrote a cycle of incredible piano sonatas that still have yet to make it into the repertoire, despite being committed to disc by Marc-André Amelin, a champion of the obscure in the piano literature. In modern days, there's still an imbalance, although there's more equality than ever. Today, composers such as Joan Tower, Chin Yi, Sophia Jubaidulina, Katia Gosch, Jennifer Higdon, Barbara Kolb, and Barbara Harbach have all written pieces that have become staples in the modernist repertoire. So every weekday this month, I'm going to be talking about great women in music from the Middle Ages up to the 20th century. <laughs> <laughs>